My name is Neil Gampa. I'm here to talk to you about adapting to app streams, delivering the data Linux agent for RHEL 8. A little bit about me. I consider myself, you know, a professional technologist. I've been working with technology since I was a kid. I've been a Linux user for nearly 15 years, uh, contributor and developer in Fedora, Magia, OpenSUSE, and Open Mandriva Linux distributions. Uh, I'm a contributor to RPM, DNF, and various related projects like OG, OBS, whatever. Uh, open build service, and we'll get to that in a bit. And I'm a DevOps engineer at Datto. Um, little bit about where I work. Uh, Datto is a company that was founded in 2007. Uh, we're a managed service provider oriented company, and so we've got 17,000 plus um, partners in the MSP area. Uh, we have 23 offices around the world. We operate exclusively within this uh, managed service provider channel, um, and we have 1,800 employees and growing. Um, we offer primarily business continuity and uh, other managed service, provi uh, managed service provider oriented services, you know, especially with the networking or um, uh, services automation and machine management and things like that. Um, but our leading product is in um, what we call the unified continuity uh, product line. And that's what we're here to talk a little bit about. So the data Linux agent. Actually, the Data Linux backup agent. Um, it's part of our business continuity slash disaster recovery solution. Um, it was released in 2015 by Data to add support for Linux systems to our portfolio of BCDR appliance products. It's composed of an open source kernel module, that's Data B, and a proprietary user space daemon, uh, DLAD, DLAD, as some people will call it. Uh, it orchestrates the backup process and sends the backups to our BCDR appliance. Uh, we've made more than 300 releases over the past five years, um, and a little under a third of those have been releases to customers. Um, over, the, over that same time span, we have supported over 50 different Linux distribution releases across uh, a number of Linux distribution families through all versions of DLA. Um, you know, just to kind of give you some idea of the version ranges here of distros, uh, RHEL 5 and up, Fedora 20 and up, OpenSUSE 13.1 and 13.2, and starting with Leap 42.1 and 15.0 and higher, um, SUSE Linux Enterprise since 11 SP4, Debian since version 7.0 and higher, Ubuntu LTS since 12.04. Um, under half of those are currently supported with the latest um, uh, Linux agent releases, like we're at RHEL 6 and up, um, Fedora 29 and up, um, OpenSUSE Leap 15.0 and up, Leap 12 SP3 and up, uh, Debian 9 and up, and Ubuntu uh, 16.04 and up. Still Ubuntu LTS there. Um, so how we build the data Linux agent is, you know, it's a little bit unusual, but we use the open build service as the core component of our, um, of our system for packaging and doing software delivery. Um, it's a software solution created by SUSE to build and manage the open SUSE and SUSE Linux enterprise distributions. It's similar to Koji, the, um, the build system used to build Red Hat Enterprise Linux and Fedora. Um, however, uh, OBS can also build for a wide variety of Linux-based platforms. There's Red Hat Fedora and Debian and Ubuntu as well. Um, SUSE offers a hosted version as the OpenSUSE build service, and they offer on their main website an appliance image that's freely available to download so you can run it on your own systems. So why we use it, um, the source services uh, give us the ability to have some flexibility for the source inputs that go into our build processes. It auto scales really easily. Um, the biggie is the dependency resolving. It automatically does dependency resolving um, through uh, the chains of packages. And as packages update, either from the distro or in other projects by other consumers, um, it schedules and rebuilds everything so that everything remains consistent in the end. Um, it's easy to deploy and get started with. And it also lets us build packages using RPM spec files um, for Debian uh, based distributions as well. So we have a unified um, uh, build, build and release pipeline for everything using a single uh, set of sources. So you'd think with all this, everything just kind of worked out of the box, but it, it's not quite so simple. Um, 
Unfortunately, application streams is actually fairly new to the ecosystem. It was introduced to, uh, to Red Hat Enterprise Linux with the RHEL 8 beta in November of 2018. Unfortunately, the incomplete state of the public beta made it difficult to do any, any development, so everything was kind of pushed back afterwards. Um, after the release, there wasn't really any guidance of how to build things with app streams or to build app streams themselves. So uh, there was no support for it because nobody really knew how to do anything with it yet. So, you know, in order to get there, we had to go to the source. So application streams is actually the implementation of the upstream Fedora modularity project in, in Red Hat Enterprise Linux. So naturally, I, I went up to that project to go find out and get some more guidance. Um, from there, uh, we, I find out, you know, module builds in Fedora, both locally and remotely, depend on a service called the module build service, which processes a YAML files that they call module MD to generate a build environment and build the package and produce the, re, um, the modules. But in order to do this, it has to talk to a Koji server. So Koji, as I mentioned earlier, is the, uh, a package build system. And it talks to a Koji server to figure out what's available and create a set of packages that should exist in the build environment. In Koji's terms, they call this a build route. This implies we should be running a Koji instance to build packages depending on modules. It also implies we have the ability to access the Koji instance building the target distribution, to be able to figure out what's available at any given time. Um, so that's kind of a problem. We have OBS and not Koji. So now what? Um, so there were three potential options that we explored. Um, one was mirror the distribution and demodularize the repositories. So what I mean by demodularize is that I take the app streams and evaluate them and um, decompose them into regular repositories that represent the combinations of streams with all the, um, with all the content so that they can be used by plain old systems that don't understand um, app streams today. Um, another one was deploy Koji and MBS and modify it to work with purely off of repositories. So as I mentioned earlier, the architecture currently expects that you can talk to the Koji endpoint of the distribution you're building for to understand what's available. Well, strictly speaking, nothing explicitly mandates that as long as you're okay with working with the content that's been published only. And so we would look at modifying that so that that would actually work properly. Um, finally, um, the last option is to, of course, enhance OBS to handle, handle app streams and other modular content. Um, so the mirroring distribution option, of course, is easy. It makes building packages with any tooling possible. It reduces the efforts to adapt tooling to support app streams. However, the major downside is that it takes a lot of space to do this. You know, there's hundreds of gigabytes over time if you're mirroring on every update push or things like that. The process has to be repeated every time the content is mirrored because because nothing else actually uh, works with the native content um, structure. So it makes it slow and expensive. And the loss of the modular dependency semantics makes it possible to accidentally create invalid dependency chains at runtime. So what may work when you build it and when you test it against the demodularized tree may not work properly for the customers on their regular systems that aren't demodularized because the dependency semantics within modules or app streams would actually cause uh, major issues, mainly blocking you from being able to install it. So the Koji model, the, the Koji option, sorry, uh, leverages the same build pipeline technologies that Red Hat and Fedora use. And it's well understood within the ecosystem for building packages, and it's easy to build our own application streams with it. However, it forces us to maintain duplicate infrastructure. We already maintain an open build service instance. Adding another Koji-based infrastructure would you know, just essentially double the burden. Um, and it would also require synchronizing between Koji and OBS to have a complete store of the package content. And that's gonna just add more space storage uh, requirements and make things a lot more complicated. And then the final bit that's a little bit maybe less obvious, but there's unequal capabilities between the two systems, and that may cause more trouble than it's worth. One of the key differences between Koji and OBS, Koji emphasizes binary environment reproducibility. So like all the packages that are ever built are kept in the store, and that lets you be able to rebuild any package with the exact same environment was built with the first time, but also 
um, MBS takes advantage of this to be able to do things like cherry pick various packages, construct a build route with whatever you wanted in it. And OBS doesn't have this, this view of the world. It, can, it cares primarily about build consistency. Uh, so it takes the latest content and it attempts to make sure that it's all the that's all consistent and valid. And it will, when things drift or change, it will rebuild everything to ensure that consistency. So the end result is that we have the latest available content all linked together. So you know you minimize the potential problems uh, re rising from those things. But again, you don't get that flexibility that you have on the Koji side for being able to cherry pick packages any which way you'd like from any build that you've ever done. So that of course leads to the third, uh, that leads us into our third option, which is enhance OBS to support application streams. So that leverages our existing tooling and pipelines. It doesn't require us to support duplicate infrastructure, um, but producing app streams would not be straightforward to implement and build, and the build system resolver needs to be taught concepts regarding application streams. It's important to note that the open build service has a built-in dependency resolver that processes build chains and cycles to rebuild packages as dependencies change. This actually has to be adapted to understand app streams and how app stream dependencies work. That is a non-trivial amount of effort, and that may that is um, a whole nother ball game in terms of like how do you make sure everything is going to work properly. So what did we do? Initially, we pursued the demodularization strategy using a tool called Groby Splitter from the Fedora Modularity Project. As running a second build system for just one Linux distribution was not appealing. Um, I did meet with the OBS team at the OpenSUSE conference, along with members of the DNF YUM teams, to hash out a strategy for supporting an OBS. The project implemented some of this over the course of the last year, which led us to refocus to porting that to a stable OBS release for us to use in production which you know, I did that and that landed um, in late February and uh, we updated our systems to uh, use that code. Um, after we upgraded to OBS 2.10.1, which was the release that included our work, uh, we just needed to add a snippet to our project configuration to enable the vert module with the rel stream. This is shown on the right. Um, as you can see here, the snippet shows, you know, if repository is CentOS 8, um, OBS represents targets um, as repositories because it, it, it uses publish-oriented semantics for mapping all of the things that you can build for. Uh, and for adding libiscuzzy devil for the, for the package, uh, we use the expand flags module vert rel to describe that we want the vert module with the rel stream to be expanded and included in the build environment. This enabled the application stream in our build environment and allowed everything to work, uh, mostly. There was one last problem. As it turned out, there was uh, a missing development header package. Specifically, uh, DLAT uses libudisks2, and we needed libudisk2devil to link to it. This was actually quite easy to rectify. We filed the case with Red Hat in January and had it added to the code-ready builder repository. Um, it was gonna come in with rel 8.3, but in order to get things out the door now, we needed it faster. And so this is where um, a little bit of uh, elbow grease and some uh, and a little work in the community uh, made this possible. So we were able to work with the CentOS project and get and use CentOS Stream to be able to get this content sooner, so that we could roll it out to our build system and start building and testing to roll out our um, our agent for Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8 uh, now and. As part of that, we are, in, we are testing this, and we, I expect it to be rolled out, you know, by the time you're hearing this. And, you know, we did it. Now we have a build of DLAD for uh, CentOS 8 from and Rel 8 for our, from our build system. Woohoo! So, you know, that was was a bit quite a bit of an ordeal, but it, you know, it went very well. I want to give some special thanks to... Uh, Stephen Gallagher from the Fedora Modularity team, Daniel Mock, Yaroslav uh, Marasek, I'm sorry if I butchered your name, from the DNF team, Adrian uh, Schroeder and Michael Schroeder from the Open Build Service team. These guys helped me throughout the whole of last year trying to figure out everything I needed to make all of this possible. And it's great to be able to work with the community in such a... Uh, 
in such uh, an open manner to be able to accomplish, you know, something that would most people would consider Herculean. Um, so here's some resources here, uh, Groby Splitter. Um, if you want to go down the Koji route, um, there's a there's a tool now from the Fedora project called Module Building in a Box, which lets you set up a Koji and a module build service um, quite easily and and get started with that. And then some more information about modularity, the Koji build system, and the open build service. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. My email address um, is on, on screen. Thank you.